my dad is a huge movie buff. He loves everything scary, dramatic, and by Stephen King. In fact, he gave me a ton of Stephen King hardcover novels, which I have proudly displayed in my living room, and some of his movies. Not all of them. He had a lot of movies. I only took the horrors because I also love horror. But this man has the biggest collection of movies that I think I have ever seen in my life. So when I was spending the night at my parents' house, they decided that they wanted to watch a movie. And after a little back and forth, they settled on Scream 6, a slasher directed by Matt Bedinelli Alpin and Tyler Gillette and released by Paramount Pictures. Now, I have never seen a single Scream movie. I know of Scream because of the Scary Movie franchise. So to say that I'm going in blind is a little bit of an understatement. I've never really been a fan of slashers personally. They start off the movie strong with a silly film professor meeting a date. Her date calls and then they chat a little bit about her love for horror movies. I mean, she's a film professor. She loves talking about slasher horror movies with her class and she focuses on the tropes and themes of different slashers. Her date says, hey, I can't find the bar. Can you go outside? And so she goes outside. He lures her down an alley and asks her to wave and she's waving. And he's like, I see someone, but they're not waving. Oh my gosh, they're coming closer to me. Is that a knife? Oh no! And it was just a little prank. She giggles and she makes her way down the alley to meet her date. Some dude named Jason, dressed as Ghostface, jumps out of the alley, mocks her for being naive, and then slashes her all up. Afterwards, he makes his way back to his apartment, hangs up his little ghost face mask next to another ghost face mask, and wanders around looking for his roommate. His roommate calls him up and they talk a little bit, and Jason expresses how exciting it was to take care of business and experience that for the first time, especially with the professor. His buddy was obviously disappointed. They were supposed to do it together for Ghostface movie. After a little bit of talking, the caller decides that he wants to play a little bit of hot and cold. Jason plays along and is led to the laundry closet. He opens the door and nothing. It was a joke. <laughs> The caller chuckles and then leads him to the fridge. As Jason opens the fridge, he sees his buddy inside. Before Jason has time to process what's going on, another ghost face comes out from behind and just slashes the heck out of him too. Ghost faceception, am I right? <laughs> As he's getting absolutely slashed the shite out of, Jason's like, what about the movie? In the next scene, we cut to Sam sharing with her therapist about dating Richie, who was the previous ghost face, I guess and the trauma of him attacking Sam and her sister, Tara. She talks about how she had to unalive him to save her and her sister. And then she starts going into explicit details. She then expresses to her therapist that she enjoyed doing it, and she's scared of those feelings. The therapist, being an absolute garbage therapist, just kicks her out, and he's like, I'm a mandated reporter, and that she needs to leave. <laughs> He doesn't want to hear about this. He's not here to help her with this stuff. It's too far for him. So instead of helping her work through it and healing from her trauma and helping her sort through it and coming to terms with those feelings and growing from it. So she goes home from her therapy session and she's looking for her little sister Tara. As she looks around, there's spooky music playing and thudding. But don't stress, it's just their roommate Quinn going to pound town with her new boy toy. She asks Quinn where Tara is, and Quinn's like, oh, she went to a frat party. So Sam heads to the party, then we cut to Tara, drinking and flirting with some guy named Frankie. Frankie suggests that they go up to his room and have some private fireball and a little bit of his pickle. And then Tara's friends try to convince her to not go up there with him. It's a bad idea. Then we cut to Chad, who is dressed as a cowboy, and Ethan as like a night bull combo. They're trying to get ladies, but their friend Mindy comes up. And Mindy comes up to them and tells Chad that Frankie is trying to take Tara upstairs and do some things. Chad goes over and confronts Frankie, and they get into a little heated argument. As they're fighting, Sam just comes in and absolutely tases Frankie in the balls. The group goes outside, and Sam and Tara argue for a bit about whether they need to leave the past behind and move on, or if they should let it dictate their lives. Then some random just runs up to Sam and dumps some water on her and calls her a murderer. Luckily, some guy had three tissues and was kind enough to share. 
As the ladies went home, Tara takes a hit from her inhaler, and Quinn apologizes for telling Sam where Tara was at. After Quinn leaves, Chad comes up to check on Tara. Chad tells Tara how special she is, and Tara's like, I'm not drunk anymore. And then they go to Pound Town. Just kidding. As they're about to kiss, Quinn comes in because she forgot her phone, and Chad just yeets out of there. Then everyone gathers around the TV, watching the news of Jason and his roommate Greg passing, the dudes from the first scene, and Sam mentions it being too close to home and expresses her desire to move again. Just then, we cut to the crime scene. Detective Bailey discovers Sam's ID at the crime scene, covered in blood. So, they call Sam in for questioning. What's up with this? After she leaves, she receives a call from Richie's number, and she answers it, of course. And it's Ghostface mocking her. Then he jumps out from the bushes and attempts to attack them. But luckily for our main characters, he has terrible aim. Tara and Sam rush into a convenience store screaming for help, and Ghostface is right on their trail. As the ladies hide, Ghostface is stabbing the absolute shite out of anybody who walks in his way. The clerk tries to be a hero and save the day, and pulls out this huge shoddy and misses a shot. And then so Ghostface grabs the shoddy and proceeds to absolutely destroy the clerk. After taking care of the clerk, he starts shooting around the convenience store, scaring Tara and Sam as they hide in the aisles. Tara and Sam try to create a distraction by throwing a can, but as they crawl away, they make a noise and Ghostface hears them. As Ghostface is rushing over to Tara and Sam, they push a shelf on him and just run out of there. By the time the police show up and Detective Bailey gets there, Ghostface is already gone. Detective Bailey is, of course, still suspicious of Sam and Tara. I mean, Sam's ID was at the crime scene. He brings the ladies in for questioning and continually doubts their story. Ultimately, he has no evidence, so he has to let them go. Sam wants to leave the city, but Detective Bailey tells her that you can't leave when you're suspected of a crime, so they just can't leave town. On their way out of the police department, they bump into Kirby, a previous character from another Scream movie, I guess? And she's an FBI agent now. After a little bit of chatting, as Sam and Tara leave the police department, they're bombarded by paparazzi. Some woman named Gail pops up, and after arguing for a little bit, Sam goes to punch Gail, and Gail dodges it. But she doesn't expect Tara to throw a punch too, and she just gets absolutely smashed in the face. They share some words about Gail writing a book on their traumas, then Sam and Tara leave angrily. We cut back to the therapist that kicks Sam out in the second scene, and he hears a knock at the door. As he walks to the door, observing the shadow, through the frosted glass pane. He asks who's there, and of course they don't reply. He gets closer and reaches for the handle, and then Ghostface just launches his fist through the window and just starts smashing the dude. He breaks in and steals Sam's file. Then we have like this weird fourth wall breaking moment where Mindy, which I guess is Chad's sister, talks about how they're in a franchise and no one's safe. And she rants about how Quinn is new and she's the sex crazed roommate so she could be a ghost face. And Ethan is also new to the group and he could be the ghost face. Just essentially just being like, you're the ghost face, you're the ghost face, you're the ghost face. Like a real Oprah moment. And then Ethan's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If it's a franchise, Sam or Tara could be ghost face. Then we cut to Detective Bailey and Detective Kirby discussing previous cases. And they fill us in with a bunch of info dumping and I'll be honest, I kind of zoned out a little. I'm a show not tell kind of person. We cut to Danny looking out his window into Quinn's bedroom in Mindy's and Sam and Tara's apartment. And he sees Ghostface. Instead of calling the cops, he waves his hand around and starts calling out, but they obviously don't hear him. Next best thing, he decides to call Sam. Sam, pick up the phone. I gotta tell you that Ghostface is in there. She ignores his call. They've got shit they're working with. She doesn't have time for a booty call from Danny. So he starts freaking out and decides to still not call the police. Ghostface Rex Quinn throws her body into the group and everyone pretty much scatters. Tara and Chad run out the door and Sam, Mindy, and Anika run to Quinn's bedroom and shut the door and block it with a dresser while Ghostface continues to attack the door. Unfortunately, he did get Anika, so she is wounded and everybody's freaking out. They look out the window and they see Danny waving to them. Has he called the police? No, 
but he pulls out this comically large ladder and just starts feeding it in between their apartment windows. Sam crawls across and makes it. Then Mindy crawls across and she makes it. And Anika starts to crawl across and Ghostface breaks in. He starts shaking the ladder until Anika falls off and she falls to her doom. She's done. Yeet. Out of here. They finally call the cops and they arrive to the scene. And everyone's still suspicious of Sam and Tara. Detective Bailey comes over and explains that he's been removed from the case because Quinn was his daughter and she's been, you know. Gail shows up and explains that she discovered something in an abandoned movie theater. Gail takes them there and uses a key card, which I kind of found a little suspicious. Why did she have a key card to this abandoned movie theater? But anyway, this movie theater is filled with memorabilia of Ghostface from his previous Ghostfacey stuff. A bunch of weapons, there's like a TV that I guess fell on somebody at some point. Just really trying to cave into that nostalgia, which doesn't work on me because I've never seen the movies before. As Sam inspects the shrine, she walks up to Richie's ghost face case, and she starts hallucinating him talking to her, encouraging her to embrace her dark side. Meanwhile, Mindy and Kirby bond over shared knowledge and admiration of the Scream memorabilia. Then Sam and Tara argue over nothing, and Tara runs away in the spooky theater, just asking to be taken out. Gail and Sam have a moment of bonding over shitty parents, and Kirby searches for Tara. Kirby finds Tara, and then they bond over their shared trauma. Then Detective Bailey, Gail, and Sam barge in with a plan. Sam and Tara are gonna bait Ghostface, and Kirby is gonna trace the call. After the ladies bait Ghostface and he calls them, Kirby shares the information that she got from tracing the call with Sam and Tara. And Sam and Tara realize that that's Gail's apartment. So they hop in Detective Bailey's car and leave him behind and just take it to Gail's apartment. Gail then gets a call from Ghostface threatening her, while Gail's boyfriend just kind of wanders around in the background, minding his own business. Despite knowing that it's Ghostface and still deciding not to call the police, while he wanders, Ghostface just snatches him and takes him out. <laughs> After the call ends, Ghostface attacks Gail and she runs to her safe and grabs her gun. She starts shooting through the door, then Ghostface calls her again and taunts her and convinces her to open the door. She does, but he's not there. And instead of staying in the room and watching the door for Ghostface to come through, she decides to wander the apartment and look for him. While they're still on the phone, she's like, actually, can you hold? And puts him on hold and then calls him. So that way his phone rings. Then she shoots in the direction where the phone is ringing, but misses all of her shots, of course. He runs towards her with a knife and absolutely stabs the ever-living shite out of her. She beats him up with a book. Then, of course, he pretends to be down. As she goes to stab him, he comes back to life and he stabs her. And then he tries to take her out for good. Luckily, Sam and Tara walk in at that exact moment and start shooting at him. Unfortunately, they also miss all of their shots. <laughs> I'm wondering if they should have brought the detective with them. Maybe he would have made some. They take Gail to the hospital, and as they're in the waiting room, Sam suggests that Ghostface is after her, and she's happy to sacrifice herself for everybody. Tara says no, and they come up with another plan. They want to lure him to the theater and trap him there. They call Detective Bailey, and of course he's on board to avenge his daughter. They all take the subway, but due to the crowds, they get split up in two groups. Mindy and Ethan are in one group, and Danny, Sam, Tara, Chad, and Kirby are in another group. The lights flicker on the subway, and the movie goes back and forth between the two groups. Mindy is very suspicious of Ethan, and there are just a bunch of ghost face costumes everywhere because everybody wants to dress as ghost face for some reason. Mindy gets shoved to the back of the train, and then ghost face pops up, covers her mouth, and just stabs her. Ethan pulls her off the train, and we cut back to Danny, Sam, Tara, Chad, and Kirby. As they're about to enter the theater, Sam tells Danny to go home. Earlier in the film, Danny told Sam to not trust anybody, including him. So she's like, remember that? So you gotta go on get. So despite Danny traveling all that way on the train and them trying not to split up because they know that Ghostface will take out people one by one, she sends him to his doom to return home on his own. As they wander the theater, Sam gets a call from Detective Bailey. He's like, Kirby's actually Ghostface because she doesn't work for the FBI anymore. She was fired. And then on the big screen, one of Ghostface's movies start playing and Sam starts getting spooked. We cut back to Tara and Chad and they're making out by the concession stand, as you do. And then Ghostface comes up and attempts to stab Tara. But Chad gets in the way and they fight. 
They get away and Ghostface finds them again. Ghostface is really uncoordinated, which kind of works out for them, so he doesn't really land any stabs. During the fight, Chad hits Ghostface with a camera and then chucks it at him. And then another Ghostface appear. And then they both proceed to destroy Chad in front of Sam and Tara. Now it's time for the big reveal slash spoiler. In three, two, one. That's right. Detective Bailey, his son Ethan, who actually has a different name, and his daughter Quinn are the ghost faces. Ghost faces. Our ghost faces. They're all ghost face. You get a ghost face. You get a ghost face. You know, everybody's a ghost face. And then Quinn reveals that she started the rumor of Sam being a murderer so that people would suspect her. And they also reveal that Richie was their brother and Detective Bailey's son, which is why they have it out for Sam. Sam, feeling a little ballsy, decides to shite talk Richie. Then Kirby jumps out to save the day and she knocks out Quinn. Sam stabs Ethan. Then she and Tara climb up the theater balcony and try to escape. Tara slips and Ethan is swiping at them toes, just reaching up there. <laughs> Quinn heads towards Sam, ready to stab stab, and Sam gives Tara her knife and then pulls out her gun. As she drops Tara, Tara stabs Ethan in the mouth. Ouch! <laughs> that looked awful. <laughs> then Sam hits Quinn with the headshot. Pew pew! After taking out Quinn, Detective Bailey starts walking over to her. But oh no, she's out of bullets! Sam decides to rush Detective Bailey and knocks him off the balcony. He blacks out and then wakes up to a phone call. It's Sam, and she asks, What's your favorite scary movie? A classic line from Scream, I think. Detective Bailey gets a little jumpy and starts shooting the dummies. Sam sneaks up behind him and stabs him. As she's about to give the life-yeeting stab, Tara walks in. Sam holds back, but then Tara gives her the nod of approval, and Sam stabs Detective Bailey in the eye. My dad yells out, I bet he didn't see that coming, and starts laughing at his own joke, which, love that. <laughs> That's where I get the laughing at my own jokes from, by the way, in case you were curious. Ethan wakes up and rushes Sam and Tara, but luckily Kirby knocks him out with a TV. We learn that Chad and Mindy both survived their injuries. Then it cuts to Sam looking in her backpack, revealing a ghost face mask that she had stolen. Tara calls out to her, then Sam tosses the ghost face mask and joins her sister. The end. Honestly, Scream 6 wasn't that bad. I actually enjoyed it, despite not being a real fan of any slashers. The twist was unexpected, and I personally thought it was really well shot. I didn't really like the fourth wall breaking scenes personally, and I felt like a lot of the characters were intentionally dumb, and I understand that they have to do that sometimes to progress in the movie, but it would be really cool to see like a successful slasher film where, where the characters aren't intentionally making bad decisions, you know? But what do I know? I've never written a movie before. <laughs> what did you think of the movie? Is it better than previous Scream movies? Should I hop into the franchise and just watch the whole thing from the beginning? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I will catch you next time. Bye, guys! With a silly film professor... Blah, 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 before Jason has time to pro... The fair... Coming... Coming to realization of those... What's the word I'm looking for? Coming to accept those feelings the terms with those feelings helping her sort through it and work on coming to term with those feelings and they just push an aisle an aisle no what is that called what's that called they just push a push up push over a shelf and they're bombarded by para para no she goes on a ranch about a ranch, <laughs> like a real Oprah mo Oprah, 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 opera. No Oprah. Then we cut to Detective Bailey and Kirby discussing the gate, gate, <laughs> discussing the case and case. Oh my god! And then Ghostface pops up, cover cover early in the fan, and then Ghostface comes up and attempts to tab, tab, and Chad grabs a camera and just chucks it as ghost face chucks it as chucks it as